All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Mickey Kennedy, who is over in Baltimore, Maryland. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Excellent. And Mickey is the CEO of eReleases, uh, and uh, you know he helps everybody, entrepreneurs, businesses, or whatever, really get their message out. And what we're going to talk about today is, surprisingly enough, the uh, the subject of press releases. So, um, Mickey, let's get let's get straight into it. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there sometimes who nowadays sort of go you know, denigrate press releases and say, oh, you know, press releases are no good. They don't work anymore, uh, et cetera. What's your, what's your answer to that? Um, they can work and they work very effectively. We did uh, one press release last year uh, during the pandemic for uh, something called the Dining Bond Initiative. And it was basically an effort to try to help local businesses, restaurants, particularly that had been affected by the pandemic and were closed. And uh, they ended up we quit counting at 150 news clips, um, but the Wall wow. Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, um, Barron's, all these publications uh, wrote about it and linked to it. They did millions of dollars in revenue um, and a, you know, a lot of restaurants were helped uh, and all from a $400 press release. And I challenge you to find any ad campaign on Google or Bing or Facebook where you put $400 in, you get millions of dollars out. And that's the real leverage that can happen if you have something that's extremely newsworthy. They were blessed by being very newsworthy and they came out at a time when uh, there's a lot of negative news and people were looking for something positive. So um, if you can sort of, uh, you know, engineer a newsworthy angle or a strategic story, uh, you can really get a lot of leverage. And that's the thing I like about press releases mm -hmm. is uh, if you if you have that newsworthiness or that, you know, magic sauce, uh, or you create that magic sauce, uh, you can really get a lot of uh, uh, results from just a little bit of money and effort. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely, and and you know we've had success ourselves in different ways with press releases. But the, I think that the part of it is uh, is Mickey is maybe that people don't put the requisite effort or thought or time or effort into into what they're trying to uh, the news that they're trying to communicate and why people should care about it. Because I feel like sometimes people just throw out rote press releases and then it's not surprising that they're not picked up that much. Right, I would say ninety five percent of the press releases that I get at e-releases are, uh, you know, new hires, uh, mobile responsive website, things that no one cares about. Um, mm -hmm. You really, if you're going to spend money to send something, and especially if it's going to go over the wire, um, like PR Newswire, you want to make sure that you're strategic. And so I have counseled some of my customers to say, uh, you know, one was a local auto repair shop in uh, Pennsylvania that uh, just wanted to get links, um, particularly auto industry links, because they um, had a website, but it was uh, controlled by Verizon super pages. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, when that went dark, they had no website. So they put a website up and they weren't ranking. So they were looking for um, auto industry links to, um, to jump up in the rankings. Uh, I counseled them to do a survey of other uh, local auto repair shops nationwide. Um, they didn't said, we don't know those, uh, you know, people outside of our competitors. And I'm like, the good news is there's lots of trade associations, find an independent trade association, a small one and reach out to them and they'll send the survey to their members. And they didn't believe me, but they'd asked and they were like, yes, we would love to do that. And we would love if you could mention in the press release that it's this independent uh, auto repair uh, trade association. And so it created a win-win for them. Uh, one of the things I always suggest when you do a survey or study is throw a couple oddball questions in there. Uh, in this case, it's what did really well. Uh, it, the question was, what's the strangest thing a customer's left in their car while being repaired? And it was just an open field where people right. would just put stuff. And uh, that was the one that did really well. And they ended up getting 10 links uh, from auto industry trade public publications. Um, I think a couple dozen newspapers, including their local newspaper, because I had originally told them that mm -hmm. I knew the auto industry trades would probably pick it up, but I wasn't sure about mainstream media, but it, it did work there as well. 
And uh, in, within three months, they were ranking number one in their community uh, for uh, their city auto repair, which was the main goal of doing that. And uh, so it really depends on, you know, what your goal is with PR. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's a case where I can't think of a more non newsworthy person, a local auto repair shop, but you know, they became the author of the study. And that gave them the authority and got them the recognition with the media. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's a fantastic example. And there again, it uh, it underlines what can happen when you put a bit of thought into it. So, I, I mean, most people sort of think they understand how press releases work and the mechanics of the whole thing and the process. Uh, can you just enlighten people? Because I think they probably don't have a, 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 a full view of how it all actually works in practice. Right. So, um there's a lot of press release services out there. If it's under $100, it's not going to media and it's not going over a newswire. That's just the sad reality of that. Mm -hmm. um, they syndicate the release to different websites, but they're not websites with traffic. And you know, it, it's not an original article written about you. The goal of PR should be to send out a press release and have someone write an article about you. In the case of the Dining Bond Initiative I mentioned, these were all original articles. The Washington Post wrote an article and it was all original content. Uh, the Wall Street Journal wrote their article, all original content. Um, the size of the stories varied. Um, you know, it, it, it was, it, you know, that that's what happens when you send it out. Now, in our case, we send out through email to subscribing journalists. And then we also send over the newswire through PR Newswire. Uh, PR Newswire is the oldest and largest newswire in the US, there's two others, Business Wire and then Globe Newswire. Anything else that has Newswire in the name or Wire is a different animal. Uh, AP Wire, UPI, Reuters, they do not issue press releases or press releases don't run over them. They license their content to newspapers and other media outlets and everything they write is written by them. They'll accept a press release, but they're not going to uh, run a press release over them. So that's, that's a big uh, thing to know. Uh, so so, you know, when you do choose a service, you want to make sure you go out of a proper newswire. You want to make sure that you're, uh, you know, reaching journalists in a targeted way. Uh, I, you know, I, I've had many people who get obsessed with numbers and they want to reach, you know, 2.6 million people. And I'll be honest with you, you can have much more leverage if you just re reach the right 50 people. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's why so many people who try to go abroad, they uh, miss the opportunity of being very niche and focused because in a niche or focus and you speak to a particular audience, you'll generally do really well with that audience. In the case of the auto repair place, uh, they just target auto trades. Probably there's you know less than a couple hundred of those, and they got picked up by around ten. Um, so that was you know uh, a really a really good pickup rate for uh, you know just a local auto repair shop issuing a survey uh, or study. Yeah, and and I think that's a great piece of advice though as well because yeah there is a temptation particularly when you get into you know press release and media to go oh let's go broader broader broader, and 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 you're correct it's much better to be to be much more targeted. Um, especially because you're competing with so much noise out there uh, that it's much better to go after a target audience. Um, so why? So a lot of people, when they write press releases, they either give it over to somebody in the marketing department and say, here, write a press release, or they have a PR agency and they write a press release. Uh, but what is it, what are the keys to writing good and winning press releases? Because I feel like a lot of press releases kind of follow a, you know, a formula and they're not that right. interesting. They're very templated, uh, you know, uh, they're written in a third person style, may have first person through a use of quotes or something like that. Um, the important elements I feel are to focus on is the headline. Um, you want it to really speak to what you're announcing. You're not trying to be clever or create a pun. That's usually what the journalists do when they issue stuff for consumers. But for them, uh, when they're on looking on the news feeds, at like PR Newswire, it's all viewed by headline and they're usually industry specific. And so they want to know, is this relevant for me? You know, put the real meat of what you're announcing right there in the headline. And for these reasons, you want the opening sentence and paragraph to be uh, really speak to what's newsworthy here, what's important, and get to uh, that as quick as you can. Um, and you know, the quote is extremely important. So many people don't realize that a good quote can save your story. Uh, it's not unusual for someone to highlight an issue within an industry uh, through a press release, 
have someone write an article about them. And then the managing editor looks at it and says, why are you mentioning this little company? I've never heard of them, crosses them out. And then a story gets written that was inspired by a press release, but the people who did the press release get, gets no credit. Well, if there was a really compelling or great quote, that managing editor would say, I don't know who this small company is, but I see why they're here. That's a great quote. He may even circle it or put an exclamation mark beside it. So, you know, a really great quote can save your story. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think it's worth uh, anybody watching or listening is to um, think about putting a lot of effort into that quote, because you because on the other thing, Mickey, you see a lot of coaches like I'm really excited about this development or I'm, you know, I'm delighted or whatever. And it, and it doesn't really tell you anything. The quote doesn't right. really add any value. Right. I, I always say, make your quote so that it can't be paraphrased. If a journalist paraphrases it in their own words, something's lost, a little bit of magic or drama or something. So, you know, if you're going to be a creative writer, you really only have to do that in your quote. The rest of the press release can be very uh, objective and uh, uninteresting because uh, it's, it's not major science as far as writing a press release. Like you said, they are very formulaic, but the real important thing is the quote and also you want to focus on making sure that what you're announcing is very strategically important. Yeah, so it goes back again to, to saying like, if you're going to do press releases, like put a bit of thought and effort into it. And obviously, if you do that, they can be they can be pretty, uh, pretty compelling. Um, how much do how much do news organizations rely on press releases or how much how much uh, attention do they pay to them? I would say that uh, as much as uh, 30 to 40% of all stories, I think, come from uh, press mm -hmm. releases. The, the actual number might even be a little bit larger because sometimes people will troll through old press releases just waiting to be inspired by a tangential, uh, you know, uh, a path towards, uh, a, you know, something with a modern angle on it or something along those lines. Um, there, you know, there's a lot of people that talk about help a reporter out as, as a tool. The mm -hmm. thing about that is in the beginning, it was great, but now there's so much competition. So it's not unusual for one journalist to go through the trouble of putting a pitch out there that they're looking for people for a story and get 400 applicants. And, you know, uh, that creates too much competition. It's, mm -hmm. it makes it very difficult for you to succeed. And most journalists just don't have the time to put together uh, a pitch and then pour through all of those things. So most stories are being written uh, that you know don't even utilize help a reporter out. So it's much better to get in front of somebody with a newsworthy announcement and be the only person there with that announcement. Uh, your likelihood of getting picked up there is, is much greater. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I have noticed that to help a reporter out uh, has become it's it's pretty extensive now and, and and pretty overloaded every day if you if you sign up to a news feed for it or a request feed you can get really overwhelmed actually there's so much stuff being asked right. um, um okay so if you were in uh if you're in a in a company um what should you do so if you're a small company and you really want to make a splash and you don't have the budget to get a pr company and you want to use a service like e-releases what are some of the tools that you have available to kind of help people who are maybe smaller need self-service a little bit more sure so i have a free master class uh, that's all about strategy uh, basically, if, if you feel you're not newsworthy, these are the strategies for you because they're the ones that anybody can sort of just walk into, uh, like the survey and study I'd mentioned before. Um, it's at ereleases.com forward slash plan, P-L-A-N, and it's less than an hour. Uh, gives you a really great education of eight great strategies that you can utilize. Um, go through it. Uh, look at uh, what type of press releases that you think of or you could do based off of that and build a campaign of four to six releases. Um, if you're going to try press releases, you really need to try four to six to see if it's going to work for you. Um, and then uh, just uh, either write the release yourself or have someone write it for you. Uh, sometimes people feel more comfortable having us write the first release, then they see how simple it is and they go, oh, I can't believe I paid money for that. <laughs> so they, they, they do it themselves. And I, I love that because press releases are not rocket science. Don't ever get tripped up on the writing of a press release. 
do spend the time on the strategy, you know, of what you're going to write about beforehand. That's the most important part of it. Uh, the writing is 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 very straightforward. And uh, again, just pay attention to the headline, the big opening of it, and uh, you know, put in an amazing quote in there. Yeah, no, that's a again, I mean, great piece of advice for people who are watching and listening is like that. It, just like anything else, the the preparation, the strategy is what's really important. The actual putting together the press release is relatively simple once you've got your strategy and your target and your target worked out. So, um, Mickey, going forward, where do you see uh, where do you see the, the the press releases industry, if you like? Where do you see this going? Well, uh, I I think that there is. Uh, a lot of content on press releases and stuff like that. I think that perhaps the newswires might start using AI to maybe prioritize certain type of press releases for each individual journalist so that maybe something that is more relevant for them rather than spending 45 minutes to an hour looking through the feed, they might be presented with, you know, 21, 20 or so articles that are much more relevant, relevant for them. Um, I see a movement towards video. I don't know how that works is whether people will be issuing a video press release or a press release that's written will be turned into video stories. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's already been done before with uh, TV, a lot of uh, TV news sections and things like that are inspired by press releases. But I do see a movement towards um, the video. I think that that's uh, a growing audience where people are wanting to consume content through video. Uh, I know Facebook has said that in the next two to three years, they expect 100% of the feed uh, on a, a user's account will be video and not text based or image based or anything mm -hmm. like that. Uh, that's uh, that, that's that's fascinating. I think, uh, and obviously, if we go to more video press releases, that introduces uh, a whole new world to to a lot of people. Exactly, it complicates it. It makes it more expensive if you are expected to produce a video press release. But you know, then again, if uh, you're producing something that's really strategic and important and you're there as a first person with the video content, I think that that gives you an early advantage and more likelihood of getting picked up if no one else is going through that effort. Yeah, no, I think that's, uh, again, great piece of advice and uh, but we should certainly um, watch out for that. Hey, listen, Mickey, uh, this has been great, um, but be, uh, all of Mickey's information, the e-releases information will be below this video. But before we go, do please tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. Okay, so uh, e-releases was started over 22 years ago. Um, uh, we focus on small businesses. Uh, all of our releases go out nationally over PR Newswire, uh, and, and they themselves charge a thousand dollars to start uh, for a U.S. distribution. Uh, U.S. distribution is included with us on e-releases. Um, we sort of act as a, a co-op for small businesses, and they know that the budgets of small businesses can't afford a thousand dollar release. So. We've made it much more economical. Uh, we have no salespeople at e-releases, so if you go to our website uh, and you know either email, chat, or or call, you'll speak to an editor uh, with no sales commission, uh, no uh, you know up upsells or anything like that. We will help you if we feel we're a good fit. And we will tell you honestly if you want us to look at a release, whether we feel it, you know, it may get some pickup or provide some tips of how to make it stronger. Yeah, listen, um, fantastic. And and just to just to be honest, uh, I have used e-releases many times. Fantastic company, great service. I have no connection to them. I'm not getting paid for this endorsement. <laughs> I'm just saying that if you are considering it, I mean, it's definitely something to look out for. Great tools, very smooth process. And as you say, like great people to work with. There's no uh, high pressure stuff coming from them. All right, listen again, um, Mickey, thank you for all your insights today. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Thank you. Mm -hmm.